Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience Methods 101. Today we are going to discuss Repetitive Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation, which is abbreviated as RTMS. In an earlier video we already discussed transcranial magnetic stimulation. We explained how a magnetic field on the head can induce a small electric field in the brain, which activates neurons, meaning that action potentials can be induced. Now, the effects of a single TMS pulse last only for a fraction of a second. But researchers started to ask the question, if we would repetitively use TMS pulses, could we maybe activate neurons for a longer time? In other words, can we change the activity of the brain for a while even after the stimulation is over? This repetitive use of TMS, unsurprisingly, is called repetitive TMS or RTMS. But there are various ways in which TMS pulses can be applied repetitively. Sometimes a distinction is made between conventional and patterned RTMS paradigms. Conventional RTMS paradigms include low frequency RTMS and high frequency RTMS. During low frequency RTMS, stimulation is given at a low frequency, typically about one pulse per second. And this is done for anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes. On the other hand, high frequency RTMS uses much faster pulses, typically 10 or 20 per second, and this is repeated for two to four seconds. Between these trains, of 2 to 4 seconds, there is a rest period of about 20 seconds. This pattern is then repeated for again anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Research in animals has suggested that fast pulses, such as applied during high frequency RTMS, can induce synaptic plasticity, meaning that the connections in the brain become stronger. And this is thought to overall activate the brain. Indeed. Various studies have found that high frequency RTMS can increase brain activity for around 60 minutes. On the other hand, animal studies also have shown that low frequency stimulation, such as used in low frequency RTMS, works against plasticity and thus reduces brain activity. And this indeed has been found in RTMS studies, where the effects also last around 60 minutes. Now, one important note is that the effects of increasing and decreasing brain activity with high and low frequency RTMS respectively are very variable. Indeed, the effects of RTMS depend on the current brain state. Some studies have suggested that when baseline brain activity is low, it is easier to activate the brain. Whereas if the baseline activity of the brain is very high, it is much easier to inhibit the brain region. So in some instances, it can happen that the effects of low and high frequency RTMS are reversed. It can therefore be very helpful to measure baseline brain activity before doing RTMS. Besides conventional RTMS, there are also so-called patterned paradigms, like theta burst stimulation and quadripulse stimulation. Particularly theta burst stimulation has gained popularity, since it seems to have the same effect as conventional RTMS, but it is much faster. During theta burst stimulation, very fast bursts of three pulses are applied, and these bursts are repeated five times per second. As with other RTMS paradigms, theta burst stimulation can be used to activate or inhibit a brain region. So-called intermittent theta burst stimulation, or ITBS, applies such burst patterns for two seconds in a row, followed by an eight second rest period. In total, ITBS is typically applied for around three minutes. This ITBS is thought to increase brain activity. Now, when theta burst stimulation is applied without breaks, so-called continuous theta burst stimulation or CTBS, the brain activity is thought to decrease. CTBS only takes about 40 seconds to apply. As with conventional paradigms, the effects of CTBS and ITBS have been shown to last for around an hour. But remember, the effects are quite variable and depend on the current brain state. What we have discussed so far are the effects of a single session of RTMS. But what happens if you do this every day for several weeks? Well, this is exactly what studies have tried for treating various psychiatric and neurological disorders, including major depressive disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, addiction and various movement disabilities. 
It is difficult to objectively record changes over such a long time, since brain physiology is changing from day to day anyway. So investigation of long-term effects has mostly relied on subjective reports of symptoms. Based on the available data, multiple weeks of RTMS can have lasting effects, sometimes for up to a few months and sometimes even a few years. But more systematic longitudinal studies are definitely required. Anyway, that's it. We hope you enjoyed this explanation and we hope you learned something new. If you did, consider leaving a like. And we hope to see you the next time. Bye bye.